I love butter. But who doesn't? I mean, it's been around for thousands of years, but thank goodness it's a lot easier to make now than it was then, and I'm going to show you just how easy. Okay, so here's what we need. A jar with a tight-fitting lid, heavy cream, and some iodized salt. Now, I also brought this along because I wanted to show you the size of the jar that I let my kids help me with last night. And they love to help, so if you have kids, get them involved because this is a really fun project. First thing we're going to do is add our cream. Now I'm just going to fill the jar about a third of the way full. Your cream is going to expand once you start agitating it. Secure the lid tightly and shake. And that's all you do. So we're going to shake this for about 10 to 15 minutes and don't stop, like I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, I forgot my watch. So you come here often? Nice weather. It's great for the biceps and the shoulders. And then you can switch hands when your arm gets tired. Now you can really feel the cream start to thicken up almost immediately. Let me tell you what's going on in here. Heavy cream is made up of these microscopic fat globules. Once you start agitating, the little tiny globules are pounding into one another, kind of like a snowball effect, and they're getting bigger and bigger. Double check the lid. <laughs> All right, let's take a look inside and see what's going on. It's kind of foamy in there, isn't it? All right, got to keep going. I'm starting to break a sweat. This has really thickened up. It's been about, I'd say, four minutes or so. Let's take a look at it. All right, so it's almost a solid now, but the next sound we're going to hear is the liquid separating from the butter. And speaking of sounds, you should go online and research some of the old butter churning songs they used to sing while making butter. Wish I knew one of them right now. <laughs> Take a look at this. See how it's really starting to solidify now, isn't it? Almost there. Hear that? The liquid's starting to separate, the liquid being buttermilk. That's it. That's the buttermilk. It's totally separated from the butter. This is so cool. Let's take a peek. See the buttermilk that's separated from the butter? It's time to strain the buttermilk off. Let's head over to the sink. So the first thing we're going to do is pour off the buttermilk from the solid. save this later. It'll make some great buttermilk pancakes. Next thing we're going to do is rinse the butter. We want to get every bit of the buttermilk off of the butter. We do this because it would prevent spoiling more quickly. Now I have a bowl of ice water, a colander, and a couple layers of cheesecloth here. So I'm going to pour my butter into the water. Remember, it's ice cold because it's easier to work with the butter. You don't want it at room temperature. 
I'm going to rinse it off a little bit. And I'm going to give it a squeeze through the cheesecloth. Just a gentle squeeze. You'll get all the excess buttermilk out of the butter. Okay. Isn't this beautiful? Let's go over to the counter and make some compound butter. So a compound butter is your freshly made unsalted butter with your favorite flavors or seasonings added. I've chosen some fresh tarragon, homegrown in my herb garden, and I'm going to lightly salt it to taste. And just a pinch of salt. I like that you can add the salt to taste. I'm going to mix this up. That's it. So now we're going to fold it out onto our sheet of plastic wrap. Now we're just going to roll this up into a cylinder and it goes right into the fridge to set. There's your tarragon butter. Here's our tarragon butter. Here's some sage butter that I made last night. Oh, and here's something really fun. Take your favorite candy mold, press your fresh butter into the candy mold, put the mold into the freezer for about 30 minutes until it sets, then pop them out and store them in your refrigerator for up to seven days. Remember, there are no preservatives in your compound butter, so it'll keep in your refrigerator for up to a week or in your freezer for up to three months. Homemade on a hobby farm. Yummy. Butter churns played a large part in early rural family homes. But by 1950, butter making was all but taken over by large creamery companies. Wooden churns like this one were used worldwide for centuries by plunging a lot of time involved. By 1940, the Daisy Churn Company had taken over producing these Daisy Churns in various quart sizes. A little less work. So cute. They're highly coveted collectibles today.